what's up everyone today we have a Honda HR214 and the problem is well one little plate back here is broken that just seems to be welded up not that big of an issue um, but the majority of the problem is that it kind of smokes when it gets started so that tells me it's getting worn out but in addition to that, after it runs for about 10 minutes, it will shut down. I already looked at the fuel cap to see if there was anything obstructing it. It looks clean. I don't suspect that being too much of a problem. So that tells me, well, let me explain why. Um, if the fuel cap was not venting, then it would suffocate the flow of fuel and the bowl would just run dry. So. Knowing that that may or may not be the problem, but it kind of looks like it's not, I'm leaning towards a bad coil or a valve adjustment's needed. Considering the valves are right here, I think we're going to start off with that. I have this propped up on a block just because I want it to have a little bit of an angle to it so the oil doesn't come rushing out. It still might, but... <clears throat> Excuse me. really hope it's not the coil because those are a little hard to find for these if I remember correctly. Not impossible, but definitely not as plentiful as some of the other ones. Really don't want to... Uh, I'm going to have to undo the top real quick too. Always part of it. Mm, four bolts surrounding the end will just take off, will loosen the cover at least. So we want to make sure we do not rip the gasket because we do not have another one. So we're going to be very careful. Excuse me. Don't know which way is better, leave it on the machine or... Looks like majority of it's staying on the machine, so we're going to try that route. These gaskets are pretty durable, too, so there we go. A little dirt fill on the cover. We'll have to clean that, but moving forward, let's disconnect the spark plug. Because, well, we don't want it to accidentally turn on the... Just put that up there so which one is loose that is the exhaust that's down let's get a fewer gauge let's see what type of clearance we have let's start off with four thousands It feels pretty good actually, 4000s. So let's see what the exhaust does. The exhaust should be. Yeah. Let's see if that's 4000s. Substantially over 4000s. Let's try 8. Not even eight. Something on the end of my gauge. Um, let's just do twelve. It's probably closer to ten or eleven. So that to me seems a little off. Let me just see what it's supposed to be. Here's a tip. If you just type in HR214 valve clearance, you're going to get a whole lot of crap. But if you come over here, Hondas will print the model and the CC of the engine on the side. So you wouldn't want to search by that and not anything else. Mechanics and welders are by far the most opinionated on what it should be, but very rarely is it what's written by the manufacturer. 
So that's why I like to go ahead and just use that. You'll get a whole lot of forms of people say, oh no, it's this, when it's really not moving forward. So, <coughs> excuse me. It says we have a GXV120. So it's supposed to be six thousands plus or minus one thousands. We're at four, so it's a little tight. Next, we have the exhaust clearance. It's supposed to be eight thousands plus or minus one. We are at least ten, so we're over. So we need to tighten the exhaust and loosen the intake. So that's that's surprising. Usually that doesn't happen. But we can do it. We're gonna grab a 14 millimeter wrench. Let's see if we can cheat. No, <laughs> it's pretty much on there. Okay, well, I suppose we will do it the correct way. Let's get a 10 millimeter as well. Wow, that's on there. That was really on there, that's surprising. Okay, so I tightened the 14 millimeter up a little bit. It really doesn't take a whole lot. And so we need 8,000 plus or minus one. We're at least 10, but usually when you tighten down the 10 millimeter nut, it will tighten. So I'm gonna set this to, hmm, usually we will lose about a thousand. So I'm gonna do a eight. could be a hair tighter. Now, the vital part is to make sure that this does not move. There we go, that looks pretty good. I don't have a way, you should not use impact by the way, but just gonna do a little bit. Ideally, you do some wrench. Okay, that has a pretty good amount of drag on it. There's something weird in there. That's eight. So it's anywhere, anywhere in between seven-ish and eight-ish. It was a little heavy on the drag. Okay. Now, let's do the intake. The intake. Was at four. Let's see if we can cheat on this one. I would assume not. Or was it at four? Let's double check. Yeah, it was. So we need to loosen this one to open it up. Oh, can't cheat a little on that one. You shouldn't cheat, but we're just gonna use this to kind of gauge and test if this is the problem. If not, we're gonna have to, oh yeah, 6,000 fits just right. 
so we're good there. We're just mainly doing this so we can make sure that if we have to check the coil, we don't spend an exorbitant amount of time. And it's tight, so don't worry about it. Everyone cheats on a little bit of things. So I'm going to clean up the inside of the cover and then we will give it a pull and see what happens. Something I want to do because it's here and we might as well is I want to look at the plug. Because the plug can be part of the problem. We have a BP R5ES. I'm going to get a meter out and we're going to give that a quick little test, but first I need to clean it. We have a, our multimeter out. The reason why we're checking this is sometimes when plugs get hot, they'll have spark when they're cold, but when they get hot, they will fail. Same thing with coils. So we're going to check. hard to check. You shouldn't really touch it with your hands, but unfortunately we're kind of forced to. It might just be so dirty that I can't get a reading. Or my meter is set up wrong. There's really nothing like else. Yeah, that's fine. Will that do anything? Well, that one works, just not this one. Could be that just too dirty. Let's see if I can find a cleaner spot. Yeah, this thing is pretty dirty. Well, it's not a horrible looking plug. I would really like to have tested it. Let me try it again. Just to see, because I, I, I really want to know if it's this is the problem. Because if this is the problem, this is a quick and easy fix. If the spark plug reads way too high, then you know it's on its last leg. But with it not reading anything, mainly due to the fact that I can't get a reading. I'm just going to change the plug. We have a brand new BPR5ES, same as what came out, except this time we know it's good. At least we hope it's good. I'm going to go exchange that. The gap looks to be about right. I'm just going to double check. It should be 30 thousandths. We are horrible scientists, but hopefully we got it taken care of. So there's really only a few things this could possibly be. One of them can be your problem. I like to do all of them. So what do I do? First things first, check the fuel cap. Same thing as your finger over a straw. It won't let fuel go down. Same thing. Check that. If Everything looks to be in good working condition and you don't believe that's the problem. Next, I would check the valves if it's an overhead valve engine. They could be getting hot and causing it to lose compression. Uh, you're looking for a tight valve, not a loose valve. We found both, so hopefully one of the tight valve is going to be our problem. There is no valve adjustment needed. Then I would check the plug or just throw a new one in like we did if you can't check it. Uh, go on the internet, look up the resistance values for whatever plug you have, and as long as it falls in that general spec, you should be okay. In general, a resistor plug is probably around five to 10,000. Well, no, 10's a little high. I would say five to seven is probably gonna be the max you're gonna wanna deal with. Some of the real small ones like chainsaws will have a plug that sometimes will go up to 10,000 and they just run fine. But these, I'm gonna say about seven, it's gonna be the most you're gonna to wanna to have. 
on line it's going to say 5. And if you see 5, then go right ahead. Change it if you want to. Next, that still does not fix your problem. Uh, you can't evacuate the carb. Maybe you do have a little water. I would suspect not because if it's cool and it starts up every time, then you're probably not dealing with water issue because water doesn't just disappear that fast. Uh, then finally, you're going to want to check your coil. Same thing, look up your resistance value on the coil. I have a video on how to test the coil. Watch that video and then follow the instructions on there. At that point, you should have found your problem. You can just throw money at it and buy a new coil, new plug, adjust the valves, new fuel cap. That should fix your problem. Assuming you don't have a worn out engine, in which case the only amount of money you're gonna wanna throw it is for a new motor or a new mower. So I'm not gonna let you watch the whole time period of me testing this, but just know that if it does fail, we'll go ahead and test that coil. If not, then know that it was successful and our valve adjustment and plug replacement was gonna, a simple fix and anyone can do it. It's just simple $8 set of fuel gauges and a trip to a hardware or automotive store for a spark plug. Okay, I will see you in the next video. You have a good rest of your day. Definitely follow me at Small Engine 101. I will catch you on the next one. And like I said, if you don't see anything after this part, I'll leave you a non-spoiler on this area. Um, yeah, it was taken care of. Have a good night.